Hi, this is Mark Laughlin with the Ambidextra Gunfighter to do my the final video in my video series on zeroing my rifles. This is on the the Marlin Guide Gun 4570, running a Weaver V3 scope, which long been discontinued. Uh, I've had pretty good luck with it; kind of a, a decent, pretty decent scope. And um, so, anyway, it's a big, big ass 4570 cartridge. And our plan is, on this case, is to, here we are, we have, we have the same duplex reticle, and I'm gonna be shooting center of square to zero it at basically at 25 meters, except in this case, I do want it, and I actually want the point of impact to be three tenths of an inch high at 25 meters. Now my goal is to have this be uh, zero, the the distant zero. So we're zeroing at 25, and kind of like we're zeroing at 20 is what we're kind of doing. And so if we zero at 20, it's gonna be a little bit high at 25. Uh, and then the distant zero will be at 130 yards. And then, um, so now I've got kind of a cheat sheet of based, assuming that all works out. And the cheat sheet is that, uh, let me make sure I've got it right here. This is at least my, my speculation on how this will work. Is that, uh, okay, so uh, basically I got a 20 yard zero and a 130 yard zero at 150 yards, it's gonna be between 50 and 100 yards, it's going to be one and a half inches high, approximately. It's, it varies a little bit, of course, but that's what my hold will be for anywhere between 50 and 100 yards. About an inch and a, a hold down about an inch and a half because it's going to be inch and a half high. Beyond that, as we continue to drop off after 130, at 150 will be two inches low. At 175, we will be five inches low at 200 we will be 10 inches low at 225 at 15 inches low and at 250 will be 22 inches low so we just have to hold based upon that so 25 and 130 zero let's uh let's make it happen definitely do not want to forget my muffs on this one will leave you ringing your ears for about a week. I'm gonna be using the loop sling again. I was gonna do a, like a hasty sling because that spreads a little more of the load across your chest, but uh, with these uh, lever evolution, the 325 grains, they're, uh, it's actually pretty mild. I mean, I've had some hand loads on this thing that were full power hand loads that were pretty gnarly. Uh, this thing does make a pretty spectacular boom. All right, just like before, we get down into my prone position, get natural point of aim. And we'll set the optic to full power. This has a really light trigger, a really nice trigger, so I've got to really pay attention that I don't uh, pretend it's like the AR triggers and stuff and the Caltech trigger. Yeah, on the 4570, I always like to remember to bring my thumb over to the side. So I have to redo my NPOA. Okay, given the cost of the ammo, unless someone's gonna like sponsor me and send me a shitload of ammo, I'm only I'm gonna do one round zeros. I've got one more round in the in the magazine, and uh, so hopefully I can get her 
zeroed within uh, with just uh, one round here. I felt like that was a good shot and uh, looks like it's pretty close. Cool thing, I'm using the same target I did with the, the Keltec, the 5.56 five, rounds. I think we'll better tell the difference. <laughs> uh, anyway, a little tiny bit to the right. Now, I'm not going to claim that, let's see, a little tiny bit to the right. I'm not going to claim that uh, that I nearly really need to click that over, but well, that's what we'll do just as a, as a test. We'll see if I can replicate that. So I'm going to bring it over, say, uh, um, a half or one minute of angle. I'll have to see what the clicks are on that optic. If they're half, I'll just bring it over a half. If it's quarter, yeah, I'll bring it over two clicks. We'll see. Maybe three clicks if it's quarter. I think it's a beast. It's so awesome. You can actually hear the thing. The It echoes across those woods. Across all the runs, the echo runs right across over through all those cattle over there. Uh, cattle don't seem to mind. They're pretty cool with it, which I'm glad. I think because our neighbor, he uh, he shoots. So we wanted to move it over to the left, just a wee bit. I'm not even sure I need it, but let's assume that I really nailed that shot and I need to move it left. And it looks like. It claims quarter minute of angle click. So I'm going to do two clicks to the left. There we go. Yeah, it'll probably be all the way off to the left side now, probably. Because my group is probably more than what we're able to measure here. But Okay, it took back up and let this thing go boom one more time. A buck fifty a pop on this ammo. You're only getting two rounds for zeroing on this one. And it's a delight to shoot though. And the trigger is freaking amazing. I don't know how anyone would make the trigger any better. I mean here there's some guys, Wild West guns and other places that really dial these things in. I don't know what they do to make this thing better. Whew. Okay, it was a dry fire. Now let's go live. Well, that was another dry fire. That time I left the safety on. Okay. Let's try this again. Let's get the safety off. It looks like I got my dry fire did. I don't think I dipped or flinched or anything. Now, now that it counts, I'll probably flinch big time. All right, let's have a look. Yeah, I love shooting that gun. It just feels so cool. Them safeties though, kind of suck. The cross bolt safety. I mean, that's just, I mean, it's great for dry firing. <laughs> you know, I guess it protects peening on your firing pin and your hammer or whatever, but it, uh, it, uh, you know, I wish it had like an AR thumb type safety on it. So it'd be ambidextrous, truly ambidextrous and not where it works differently, where you push it in on one side for safe and push it in on the other side for fire. So anyway, uh, we did get the, the shot moved over almost exactly what I wanted. Uh, a little bit higher this time, but I'm going to call that good. I'm ready to rock with that because that actually, uh, you know, I was looking for, was actually looking for it to be three tenths of an inch high. I actually forgot about that. So, uh, if that's the case, we are spot on. I think that's about three tenths of an inch high. 
It's Mark Laughlin with the Ambidextral Gunfighter. If this video is helpful, please like, share, and subscribe. And uh, and help, you know, send us some, send me some freaking 4570 ammo so I can blast those things away, you know, blast away on this some more. I did want to do some left and right and all this, but uh, I've kind of got my mat here set up and uh, and so shooting left would be a little, given the angle of the train, maybe a little awkward, but uh, anyway, mainly this wasn't about being ambidextrous, this was about zeroing, so hope you enjoyed the video.